And these are the people that they don't have that, but let me show you who does. And they might even call ahead and say, hey, I've got somebody I'm sending over and they, do you have this tire in stock? Okay, but level four, they are unlimited. There are no limits. And they believe that if the pie's not big enough, what do you do? Just make it bigger. And these people don't work. They just don't view what they do as work. It's just what they are and how they do things. This person would say, come back in 30 minutes and I'll have the tires for you. Goes out and gets them from the other place, brings them back, sells them for exactly what they've paid. Yes? You know Harrods in London, world's largest department store, real mm -hmm. famous and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're known for anything you want, period, call Harrods. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, but you can get it. Mm -hmm. And I was in there talking to one of the folks and they said, yeah, that, that happens quite a bit. We had a call. We needed 600 pounds of sausage flown out to a cruise ship. And they made it happen. Yeah. And I've been to a restaurant in San Francisco where they said, if you're sick and you don't like what's on the menu, tell us what you want. We told them they went grocery shopping and made it. Yeah. It's really amazing that uh, they'll get you a pink Lamborghini, that whatever you want, whenever you want it, they just say, we'll fix it and we'll make it work. Yeah, I'm not making this up. This actually happened. Okay. Now, I've got a question to ask. In this transaction, did the company make money? No. In the big picture? Absolutely. Because let me tell you, the person goes home with their tires and everything like that. Then it comes gardening season. They need some manure. So, honey, I'm going to go get some manure. Well, where are you going? The clothing store. Right? Because that's where they were treated wonderfully. Now, I want to tell you guys something before I ask the next bunch of questions. How many of you have been to Disneyland? Let's see the hands. Raise them up way high. I have a serious addiction. I have annual passes to Florida. Okay? Not just Anaheim. Okay? But every, how many that didn't raise their hands have at least seen a Disney movie. Okay? That didn't raise, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, she was visualizing, okay? No. <laughs> and the thing I want to point out is when you go into a restaurant, when you go anywhere, when you do anything, subliminally, you compare it with your best and worst experience. You rate it every single time. Every time. Now, how many people have been exposed to Disney's quality of service? Everybody. So guess what? When I ask the question, how many of you compete with Disney? I want to see the hands. Every single one of you compete with Disney because whenever you have a contact, have you heard my story about the popcorn line, Bruce? Yes? No? Okay. Going to a movie. This guy gets up there and he's in the line and we've all had this kind of an experience where how long is the line? It's tremendously long. There's what, two minutes before the movie starts and you're up there and all you want is popcorn and a drink and you're like this. Finally, the guy in front of you gets up there to, to the clerk and he just kind of goes, now let me see. He's been in line for 25 minutes, but now let me see what I want. Well, this person couldn't resist and made a few uh, remarks about IQs and very low numbers and things like that. You know, no big deal. They were going to different movies. Well, guess what? The next day, this person had a job interview. <laughs> Lo and behold, they would meet again. The same person that he was referring to low numbers and IQs was the person across the desk that he was interviewing with. Long interview? No. no. Very short. Got the job? No. no way. You never know. You just never know. So how many of you are in the service industry? Every single one. Of, the only people who aren't in the service industry are people who don't have customers. And guess what? You're not in any industry if you don't have customers. Okay? And that should be all of us. So are there any questions? I just gave a two-hour presentation in 45 minutes, as you asked. <laughs> okay.
I, I hope that wasn't the only reason. I'm done. Whoa, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay, yes. Just a few years ago, I was reading a study come out of the number one uh, service rated industry. And uh, you talked a lot about Disneyland. Is that the number one rated for a highest quality of service, or is there another? What are the competing ones with Disney out there? Is, like Walmart or Don't even mention Walmart. <laughs> Have you been to Walmart? <laughs> Your greeters. Thank you. Widen your aisles. Anyway, no. Uh, Disney is basically the one that people, everybody points to. Uh, let me just give you one local, Larry H. Miller. How much did Larry Miller know about movie theaters? I mean, when, to be honest, he had, when he bought the property, he had no idea what he was going to do with it. And then somebody said, we'll do a movie theater. And guess what? Nobody would give him money. Why wouldn't they give Larry Miller money to do a movie theater? He had no experience. The least important thing. Okay? But and he, he believed in what he could do, and he knew something. If you give them quality service, they'll keep coming back. But then there was a problem. He got the building, he got the theaters. Anybody been to the multiplex theaters? Kind of nice. Now, Thanksgiving, remember, he didn't build that one. Okay. But they're good, they're nice. I'm going to reveal a secret to you. Real butter, Real butter yes. Uh, what do you like about the most about Larry Miller's theaters compared to other theaters? Okay. Do you know when he did reserve seats? Bruce, help me out here. A year ago? No, it was about three years ago because he had somebody who would rent theaters from him, and um, that person got the three to four hundred people in and out in less than fifteen minutes. And the uh, manager asked that person, "How do you do this? I mean, you, you've been to other theaters; they have the big long lines, chaos, and mingling, and you know who's where and what and why and how." How are you getting a full theater completely in? And we noticed that our popcorn sales are going up, so they're in that line too. How are you doing this? And I'll have to be honest with you, I showed him the tickets that I printed out that have the map on the back of the theater. These are the seats that they're sitting in, and they just know where they're going on. They don't worry about it, and they just go in and sit down, and then they leave. Three months later, that manager was promoted, and they went with the idea of reserve seating. I should have gotten a percentage. Anyway, but yeah, that's one of the things that they did. They innovated that way. Okay? And the big thing is, is Larry Miller didn't know anything about it. He couldn't even show first run movies at first. Did you know that? He had to go get the, you know, the dollar theater stuff, and he had to go get the, the, the Mary Poppins for the 45th time and things like that because the movie theater, the distributors wouldn't even sell to him. What's funny is then, after one year, they started sending their people to him to be trained on how to do it. So there's a good one, too. Any, any of those? So nice to have somebody local, right? Yeah. Everybody asks, why don't I work for Disneyland? Have you ever been to LA? Driven in it? That's why I don't work in Disneyland. Have you ever been to Florida? Yeah. It's humid. Extremely stifling. That's why I don't work there. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a hint. Bruce, I think I'm done. <laughs> I better be. Now, if you have anything, there's my email address. Okay. Hello. <laughs> oh. Thank you, sir. The world's greatest speeches oh. for you in audio and in book form. Thank you. Thank for you being very here. much. Mm -hmm.